Hello, uh, welcome back to this revision video if you've used it before, I hope it was helpful. If this is the first time you've used this video, uh, welcome, I hope this is a big help. As always with these videos, test yourself first, so there are three questions in this video, two on uh, this part and then there's one to follow. Pause, answer the questions and then we'll talk through the answer and you can check if you got it right. Okay, what's the purpose of self-fractionation? So imagine we have some tissue, two very different tissues here, liver possibly, and a leaf, could be any tissue, this is just two I've picked. Take a biopsy from those tissues, and the idea of self-fractionation is from those biopsies, you are able to isolate organelles. That is the purpose. Isolation of organelles. So describe the three steps of self-fractionation. So I wanted you to state the steps but then give details. So let's start. So we'd have a tube and we'd have some solution in there. We'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. And we place our biopsy in there. What do we do? The first thing we do, homogenization. What is this? Your answer should be this. And so you're using that physical force, that mechanical force, to break up the tissue. So you might use a, like a pestle and mortar type thing like this. That's to, to release the organelles from the tissue and the cells. So there's something important to note about this solution that homogenization takes place in, and you should know this. So three characteristics of this solution. Maybe you could pause now and test yourself on this. Do you know the three features of this solution that are important? Okay, so let's, let's see what those things are. Those three things are important. Okay, so the second step. What is that? It's just basically removing any unbroken tissue from the first homogenization step. So you'd simply put a filter, like a mesh, over the tube, pour the homogenate through and catch anything that hasn't been broken up. And that solution is called the homogenate. And the final step, what is that? And so during the centrifugation, you get two things in the tube. So just showing you a very simplified diagram of centrifugation here. It's spinning the tubes and you obtain a pellet and then any solution above that pellet is called the supernatant. Pellet is also sometimes called the sediment. So you can put, call it the pellet or sediment. And then the solution above is the supernatant. Okay, so let's look at the ultracentrifugation in more detail. So I've got another question coming up. So here's the question. I just want to talk through something before you have a go at that question uh, because that's what's going to give you the pellet information. So we go through a series of centrifugation steps. So that first centrifugation will be at low speed. And that will give a pellet and supernatant. The pellet is collected, the supernatant is then transferred to a new tube, and you centrifuge again. That gives pellet two. You collect that pellet, you take the supernatant, put it in a new tube, and you centrifuge again. And you keep repeating that. And obviously you get pellet three and so on. And the next and the next. And so the first centrifugation step will be the lowest speed and the final will be the fastest. And 
at those higher speeds, that's what we call ultra centrifugation. The reason it's ultra is because it's very, very fast. So six pellets, six organelles match the organelles to which pellet they would be isolated from. So pause and do that. Okay, let's go through answers. So pellet one would have, and they are the heaviest. Pellet two, three, four, five, and finally, and they are the lightest. Okay, so that's cell fractionation. So just a reminder for you, I always put relevant textbook pages and revision guide pages in the description below. So please also have a read through those pages and test yourself with the questions in those pages too.